Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at Solid RF's Mobile Force 4G Cell Booster, which supposedly can give you up to two additional hours of talk time, and this is specifically made to put into your vehicle. So let's go ahead and just get it out of the box and then we'll talk features. So we open up here, we have a manual. Then we have the actual booster itself. It's all housed in a plastic container here. And the box comes right over. So this is the booster. This is where you'll actually mount somewhere uh, hidden in your vehicle. Uh, you can do screw mounts or you could do some other type of mounting method. And uh, this is what's actually going to boost the cell signal. We then have this here, which is the actual inside antenna, which you'll mount somewhere like your dash that will connect to the unit. And this will actually take the amplified signal and send it out into your vehicle for you to use. We then have our outside antenna, which is a small mag mount antenna. And then you'll just run this wire into your vehicle and then down to the booster unit. And then we finally have our plug-in DC voltage cable, which goes right into your cigarette lighter. And this provides power to the unit. So really, overall, it's pretty simple. It's only got four main components. And other than that, it just depends on how you want to install it, because there's many different ways you could do it. So let's go ahead and talk some specs on this thing here. We'll go over some of the stuff that's just right on the box. So it says that uh, improved inside cellular voice and data signal, reliable cell signal and more consistent data speeds, automatic oscillation control and network overload protection. And this one says specifically application for a car, truck, RV and boat. Features serves as an in-vehicle solution, easy to set up with all hardware included. Boosts signal for all U.S. and Canadian cell carriers. Supports multiple users. Multi-bands, 700, 850, 1900, and 2100 megahertz. Works with 2G, 3G, and 4G networks, except for IDEN and Nextel. Automatic gain control ensures reliable coverage, even with an intermittent incoming signal. 3 watts of radiated transmit power. FCC and Industry Canada certified. Benefits, improved inside cellular voice and data signal, reliable cell signal, and more consistent data speeds. Faster data downloads. Reduce radiation and increase battery life up to two hours additional talk time in weak signal areas. Automatic oscillation control and network overload protection to maintain and maximum gain at all times. Protect cell sites from harmful interference. And so that's pretty much all the information that the box provides. Uh, so from here, we're actually going to go ahead and install this in my Ford pickup. And we're going to test it out and go to some places that I know have really bad signal and see what the results are. You know, are, can we make a call? We're in places where we haven't been able to before. Uh, and can we even use data in places that we haven't been able to use data before? So I'm looking forward to getting this installed and testing it out. I live in an area that has very poor cell coverage outside of the main city area so I'm, I'm really excited to try this out so let's go ahead and take it out to the truck and we'll start our install okay so here we are at the truck and the first step is to actually install your antenna and they recommend 50 centimeters away from any window which comes out to be approximately 19 and a half inches so about right here and then running down the side back into your weather strip seal However, I'm going to take the lead from the last guy who owned my truck here and, and I'm actually going to run my cable back through here into this tail light up top where they have their Sirius XM mounted, um, but I don't use that. So I'm actually going to remove that and then replace it with this. So let me get back over here and then we'll go ahead and start taking that off. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take this light off. In this case, it's just two Phillips screws. Okay, 
Okay, so you can see here, this is the XM Sirius radio. And so I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove this antenna completely out of here, because I'm not interested in using it. And then instead of having mine come in through the top, what I'm gonna do is file a small channel here on the bottom. And I'm just gonna run the cord over the top and then back up in. So that way I can keep the water out a little bit better than the previous setup. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so now that I got a, a good fit here, let's go ahead and go down and we're gonna have to drop the headliner so that way we can pull our cable over to the side and bring it down uh, to where we're actually gonna hook it into the booster itself. So if we were following the original instructions and we had placed the antenna up here right in front of the door, we would actually be feeding that down into this channel here. And this all just pulls right out and then you would feed it right in between here all the way down to the bottom here where you'd go back in behind the plastic and either come out under the seat or come up to the front depending on where you're mounting your amplifier. But for what I'm doing, I actually have to remove quite a bit of stuff like the door handles, the top seat belt post, and even the cabin light in the back, which is a lot more involved. And unless you feel comfortable doing stuff like this, I wouldn't go that route. I would just stick with the instructions that they provided. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep pulling this stuff out so I can drop the headliner down and feed my cable over essentially to the same area. Okay, so in my case, the door handle here is a seven millimeter socket. Uh, however, keep in mind that your vehicle, depending on what it is and who it's made by, uh, may vary significantly as far as the actual tools needed to complete this job. And here I just dropped the panel for the light and if you look right up here where my fingers are going, that's actually the hole that I can see from on the other side of my uh, brake light up top. So that's where our cable will actually feed through and then start going this way underneath our roof panel. Now I also did have to pull out one of these pins from the side here and once I'm done that'll just get pushed back into place. Uh, as far as screws for this it was just a couple Phillips screws that had to get pulled out. Okay so before we move any further up top here I'm gonna go ahead and just spray a little Windex and just clean off the surface. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and find our 19 and a half inch placement for our antenna. Okay, so there's that placement. And then we're going to go ahead and center this as best we can. And then we're going to have our cable running straight back for a nice clean look. So I'm gonna take the end of this cable and I'm gonna feed it down through the back here. Okay, we're gonna reconnect our tail lamp. Place a dab of silicone right here where our cable is coming through. Okay, set a bolt in place. All right, we're firmly in place. Now we'll have to go back down side to feed the cable over. Okay, so what I did to get the cable from here all the way over to down underneath this passenger seat, which is where the unit will be going, is I ended up passing it through here. And then since I had all this loose, I was able to pull down this headliner and feed it over. Then I pulled down here after 
dropping this uh, weather stripping off, passed it through here, passed it along the whole edge here, and then over here where I uh, took the front weather stripping off and then fed it down this side channel all the way down the front, down to the bottom, and then went underneath the uh, floorboard here and then back up under the seat. So I'll show you that. Okay, so yeah, once I got the cable out here, brought it down and around through the strip, and then I popped the floorboard here up, and then I fed the cable back underneath. And so then you can see here it comes up and then goes directly under the seat where we'll mount the unit. Okay, so this is where we're gonna mount the unit, which is right underneath the passenger seat. I don't have it mounted yet because we'll want to do a full test before we get it mounted. So this is the outside antenna port. So I'm going to take my antenna from the outside there and I'm going to place it in and then screw it into place. Okay, that's finger tight and then when I actually mount it I'll probably take a uh, small wrench and just very 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 lightly tighten it just a little bit more than I can get finger tight just to keep it locked into place. So now we're going to take our other inside antenna and our power cord and we're going to start running those to the front. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just open the glove box and then lay this down out of the way. That way I can test fit and see if I can run my cables back in through the dash and then back under over to the actual amplifier. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take a piece of bailing wire. You can actually use any sort of a wire or antenna or anything like that to uh, pull things through really tight spaces. And then I'm just going to feed it back through here. And then over out through this hole right here, which is where I'm planning on feeding both the power cable and the actual antenna, which I'm planning on cleaning this surface and mounting right here, centered on the dash, and then using this plug right here to be able to power the unit. So what I'm going to do, now that I have it ran, is I'm going to take Take both ends of this right here and some electrical tape. And I'm just going to hit these with a little bit of tape. And then tape those right here to the end of my little rod. Keep in mind if this is space is really tight, you may have to do these one at a time. But I think I should be able to get both through just a short gap here relatively easily. So I'm pulling over into here. And then I can go ahead and get these pulled all the way through. So this cable here we we'll want enough room that we can actually completely unplug it. So that's about six inches that we'll need for that. Well, this cable we actually won't need quite as much because we'll only need enough for it to be able to feed out to be able to stick here on the dash. But before we stick that into place, we're gonna just take some Windex. You can really use any cleaner you want. And you're just going to want to clean off the mounting surface, wherever it is you're planning on mounting. So that way you can get all the dust, dirt, oils, anything that's going to reduce the adhesion of the actual inside antenna. And we'll just make sure it's nice and dry. And we'll peel back the sticky pad, back of the antenna here, appears to be a 3M 
adhesive pad. And you'll want to make sure this is a nice flat surface as well. Otherwise, you're not going to get very good contact. So then I'm just going to apply pressure here for at least uh, 30 seconds or so just to promote the good adhesion between the two. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is find a spot in here and I'm actually going to secure these cables with a zip tie. That way the length doesn't shorten or lengthen over time. So let me grab some zip ties real quick. Okay, so I'm first going to zip tie the cables right in place to a couple other existing cables that are running towards the back. Then I'm going to go ahead and feed these cables down. underneath the dash here. And then I'm going to take a second zip tie and tie wrap them over here to another batch of existing cables just to hold them in place. Nobody's going to see this so it doesn't have to be perfect but if you want to keep your cables from shifting this is a pretty good idea. Okay, we'll snip those down. Okay, so the next thing we're going to have to do is go ahead and pull out some of these bottom panels. Uh, I'll have to pull out the floor mat, then this side panel, and then the track that goes back. And we'll come up in the same exact spot where our antenna cable comes up from the roof and to plug into the amplifier. Okay, so I'm just going to pull out the floor mat here. Then I'm going to take off this base piece here, this little track, which should just pop up. Okay. You can see we have some other wires that are running back to the uh, sound system in here. Alright, so then you just pop that out. Then we're just going to feed the cables right underneath here and we'll actually put this one piece back in place alright then we'll run these back here feed these under here back to where the other wire is coming back up to the amplifier and then we'll just go ahead and tuck those cables back there and we'll go ahead and replace our track here cover and it should just pop into place along the entire thing okay now we'll have to move back over to where the amplifier is so we'll go ahead and scoot the seat forward and then we'll show you how to hook that up. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is plug in our power. However, keep in mind, unless until you have all your antennas hooked up, make sure that the plug is actually not plugged into the cigarette lighter. You just don't wanna apply power without the antenna on. So we'll plug that in. Then we're gonna take our inside antenna cable. We're gonna run it up here so it falls in line with the other cable for the outer antenna. Just kind of neatly tuck it under there. Then we're going to take this cap off the side and it does actually say inside right here. And we're going to place the cable in and then go ahead and tighten it up. Okay, so now everything's connected. I'm going to take 
a small zip tie and just throw it around here. That way I can just do some slight cable management so that this cable isn't flopping all over the place. Then I'm going to tie these cables here together. And then I'm going to do some slight cable management on the power cable down below. Okay, now I just need to snip the ends off the cable ties. Okay, so now we're all mounted here. Now the next step will actually just be to plug it in and see if it actually works. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get this thing plugged in and you should see the little power light come on the side here. Okay, and then you can see the light did come on. And we have no alarms going, so that seems like a good start. So the next thing we'll have to do is actually some testing and we'll have to see how this thing actually performs when we go from places with good service to places with no service. Okay, so the way I want to mount mine is I'm actually just going to use some Velcro here. And then I'm going to go ahead and set it in place here. And then just push down firmly here for a little bit. This way I'm not creating any extra holes in my vehicle. And it'll be easy to move if I ever decide that I want it somewhere else. So there we go. So now it's firmly in place. It's not going to move around or slide around or anything like that. But I didn't have to actually drill any extra holes in the truck. Okay, now the next thing I need to do is go ahead and button the truck back up, put every, all the lights back up and the handles and everything, get it all back together. And then we can start doing some testing and see how this actually works. I did take a quick peek at my cell phone from the time plugged in versus unplugged. And uh, the signal was improved, although I'm not in a spot that typically would have bad signal when you're outside anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and get this done and then we'll uh, hit the road here and do some testing videos. Okay, so here we are out on the road. We are at our first testing destination, which is just outside of town. And we're in a spot that is bouncing between two and three bars. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at an app that I have here, Network Cell Info Lite, which will actually show you. So here we are, we have negative 114 dBm, negative 109, depending on uh, what status we are. And that's just showing the actual cell signal we're receiving right now. Um, with the two to three bars, you should still be able to make voice calls. You should even, it's showing 4G, so you probably could still watch videos, but it might not be the fastest. So now we're, yeah, between neg 110 and, and 120, pretty much. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in, and then you gotta give it just a minute to power up and initialize and everything like that. So here we are, I'm seeing I have a full five bars, but my four or my LTE coverage is showing neg 97 dBm signal. Um, so that's actually improving my signal from my phone up to the cell tower. But uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, probably not, but up here I'm showing full five bars. So my phone's not having to work hard to get to that signal anymore. Um, I know there are different ways to do this where you can actually see uh, how it is affecting your specific phone signal, but this is actually to the tower. So now one other thing I want to do is with this on, I want to do a speed test and then we'll turn it back off and do another speed test to see. So with it, this is how much we get. Without it, this is how much we get. So let's go ahead and get that up real quick. Okay, I'm going to run the speed test. And then I'm going to grab a snapshot of the results and then I can show you guys that potentially on the screen when I actually do the editing for the video.
Okay, so with the booster plugged in at the spot we're at right now, I can get 3.43 megabits per second download and 4.29 megabits per second upload. So now I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the booster, wait for the signal to settle back down to where it should be. Okay, I'm back down to my three bars. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try it again and see if there's a difference. Now it's actually dropped all the way down to one bar, so this is not the best location, which is exactly what we're going for. Well, it's definitely a big difference here. I'm, it's almost done here, and I'll tell you what it is. Okay, so without the booster plugged in, where I'm just on the regular poor cell service in this area, I'm getting 2.69 megabits per second download speed, which is pretty significantly slower than uh, before. And then our upload is where things really get crazy at 0.92 megabits per second. I mean, that's a huge difference right there. But I'll post those numbers up so you guys can actually see the comparison. But now we've seen what it can do with signal where there's enough signal to actually, you know, still use your phone. Uh, but now let's go find a spot where historically I haven't even been able to make a phone call. And let's see if we can get a phone call or something out of there. And... Uh, actually talk to somebody, maybe even get some data, which was not even an option before. So let's go ahead and drive there. Okay, so we're at our second location here, and we only are showing one bar with one X, and the network cell info. We're seeing it showing we're roaming at negative 106 but it's net one times RTT roaming so it's pretty much nothing um, let's go ahead and try and do a speed test before we turn on the booster okay it's searching now I'm showing just one bar with no data of any kind it's trying you guys probably can't see this very good And it's not even gonna be able to find something. It's looking, but it's not finding anything. So let's go ahead and plug in the booster and see if we can get anything. Okay, so immediately our bars jump up, obviously. We're up to uh, three bars at this point, still showing the one X. We'll let this sit for a second and see if it gets better. So now I'm seeing up and down arrows, so we are roaming on 3G at this point with the booster on. It's looking for a server. I'll press the go and see if it can find something. But it's trying. We're bouncing between three and four bars on our phone here. And it's trying, but it's just not enough to get out over the network for the uh, data but we're showing still showing three or four bars but let's check our our network cell info here so now we're we're still roaming but we're now at neg 87 so we are significantly improved over the neg 106 which was in the gray uh now showing neg 84 neg 86 kind of bouncing around in there um but i'll try and do a uh, snapshot here okay with it on there so you can so I can show you the difference so uh, where we couldn't have made a very good call here before okay and then here we go with the before so um, we have pretty steady signal once we have the booster in so now we're gonna go to a spot where we normally can't even make a call and we're gonna see if we can make a call from there Okay, here we are at location three, 
and we are showing no bars, just an X. Uh, if we come into our network cell info light, it just shows searching for signal and we definitely don't have any data. So let's just try and make a phone call here. Okay, it, it tried, I think, for a half a second, but then it it's just beeping and then it's not. So I won't even try to make a phone call right now. Now let's plug in our booster and see what happens. So remember, we're at a place showing no signal. So with the booster plugged in, we'll give this thing a second here. I'm showing the roaming indicator still on. I'm showing three bars of signal on my phone and a NAG 87 dBm uh, signal. So three bars and I'm showing one X which is trying to do some up and down but as we saw at the last location it just doesn't really work. Um, for data that's not really there. But let's try and make a phone call again. So it's trying. Here we go, the phone's ringing. They don't answer. Okay, so that right there, I was, I was pretty excited to test this out because I was very curious. Um, but I'm in a place, like I said, that I, I like to come out and hang out, and there is no cell service here at all. I mean, you can't make a call, you can't send a text. So once you're here, you're cut off from everybody, which is, you know, mostly okay during the summer. But if for some reason you did need to make a call, for example, you had an emergency and you need to call the uh, law enforcement or some medical people, now I can plug in my cell phone booster and get out to those people for those emergency situations. Or if you just have people coming out and you want to, you know, see if they are still coming or if they need to bring something extra, because that happened to us last time, uh, it's something we forgot and we weren't able to tell them. So if somebody had to go all the way back to town and let them know. Okay, so. After doing some more testing out here, I found that I can make calls to landlines uh, out here. Remember, there's no service at all. Can't make any calls to anybody, period. Not even a bar showing up. But I can make calls to landlines. Uh, I don't seem to be able to make calls to cell phones at this point from my bit of testing. And I can't send text messages because our carrier runs text messages over data. I don't know if other carriers do as well but it's something to keep in note. But the fact that I can call a landline out here is comforting, you know, if something happened or whatever, like I was saying before, that's awesome. So uh, I think this booster does what it says it'll do. It boosts up your signal. It makes it so you can make calls and send text messages in places where you might not normally be able to do so. And in this particular case, mind you, not all cases I'm sure will work like this, but in a place where we don't have any signal at all, can't make a phone call I can actually get enough signal to make a phone call to a landline uh, which I think is pretty dang cool so at this point in time I have to say I recommend this booster if you're looking for something to give yourself a little bit more peace of mind while you're out on the road uh, there are a few things that I would like to see uh, perhaps a longer set of cables for the antenna the inside antenna and the actual power uh, cord um, I would like to see those be a little bit longer that way you have a little bit more flexibility uh, however if you install the whole system the way that they show in the manual you have plenty of cable pretty much guaranteed no matter what vehicle you're in uh, it, things get a little tight when you go off of the the main plans and so I'd like to see at least the option to buy longer cables for uh, different applications 
but other than that I think it, it works well it does what it says it's supposed to do and and I'm happy with it uh, I would give it at this point I'm gonna say probably a 9 out of 10 just because it doesn't have an option for longer cables uh, at this point that I know of anyways but I would definitely say it's worth buying if you're looking for something like this it gives you capability that you just can't get any other way so I think that's worth it so I think that about covers it for the video if you liked the video give it a thumbs up uh, feel free to check out I put links down below if you're interested in one of these boosters where you can find it on Amazon once again still not an affiliate at this point um, you can follow me on Twitter that links down below as well but don't forget to subscribe share the video if you know somebody else who needs to be able to talk out in the middle of nowhere and uh, they can't do it right now this would be good for them and don't forget to like the video and tap the bell if you want to hear anything else uh, from any other videos that I post that will automatically notify you so thanks for watching and we will catch you on the next one